show. This is the weekly beer and video review show with me, Travel Man Dan, aka Reading Man Dan, aka Movie Man Dan, and we are pumped and ready to go for an awesome show. I cannot wait. I'm so excited about today's episode because we got some fun stuff going on. We're probably going to run into a, a little situation with less people because of the time zone. So, um, you know, hang with me on that one. They're probably not the time zone. We are, um, we change our clocks here in the United States in the spring and in the fall. So we, um, we took an hour away and, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, we gained an hour. So we moved ahead an hour and, um, is that right? I always forget. Anyway, it's fall back, spring forward. So however you want to, <laughs> you know, we probably are going to miss a lot of people because they probably think it's only nine o'clock. Um, right now and uh they have an hour to go but if you're here now thank you so much we're still going to go on with the show at the regularly scheduled time which is 10 a.m pacific standard time so i'm really excited to to get going sorry about this let me fix that real quick and we're at a little bit of an angle but that's all right hey welcome to the show if this is your first time on the show welcome 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 if you're a reoccurring guest and you show up each and every week i really can't say thank you enough uh for your support for the uh continue uh, supporting me and well just coming on the show each and every week to have some fun while i drink beers and talk about my videos so if you're new let me tell you a little bit about what we do here um we'll go ahead and we review two beers and today i have some fantastic beers i'm going to review it's going to be awesome then while we're talking about the beers and reviewing them i go ahead and i preview the videos that are coming out next week on my channel and i talk about the video that came out last week on my channel all swirled around a lot of fun segments like what would you rather we have a segment called this day in history we have a segment called show and tell and i want to get to that in a minute show and tell is a lot of fun um give me one second all right and so sorry about that i'm having a, just a little minor issue with uh, the technical side of things here on my part, but we'll be able to sort them out. I think we've pretty much taken care of it, and let's roll on with the show. So, really fun, good stuff. Good to see you here. Do we have anybody in the room? We have three people in the room already. Yes, welcome, love and light from Copenhagen, Drunatic. Welcome to the show. Um, welcome. Let's get started. Today is going to be a lot of fun because I got some delicious beers from two local breweries here in Los Angeles that I absolutely love. And let's start with the first one. We're going to get right into it. Hey, Stuart, operator malfunction. Yeah, it's probably me, right? It's always me. I know. We're getting better at this thing. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Stuart. I know that uh, we might have some people that are forgot about it or got mixed up with the time change. Whatever the case may be, we're still rolling on. And today's first beer is a lot of happy time, James J. Yeah, I know. So is it is it we lost an hour or we gained an hour? I, I go through this every year, twice a year. Um, so I'm, I'm very curious how this actually works. So, um, yeah, so here we go. Anyway, let's get started. Today's a lot of fun. We reviewed a beer from this brewery last week. And... Um, I'm really excited about it because they have another bitchin' label. It's another strong beer that I like, the style of beer that I like. And guys, let me introduce you to today's beer from the paperback, Lost Time Due to the Split Bees. Get your butt up here. I know. I know, man. I got to get up there. Okay, Stuart, I promise I'll come there. Mm, let's, let's, let's plan on April sometime. I'll come up there for sure. All right, Paperback Brewing brings us the Hollywood Hellcats. Yo, Carlos Z, you're the man, dude. Thank you so much for showing up. We're drinking this Hollywood Hellcats from Paperback Brewing here in Glendale. It is 7.1%, so it's a stronger beer. Yep, we're going to bring out the old Popeye today. And um, it's a West Coast style of IPA, very similar to the one uh, too late. Okay, what are we thinking? Love your t-shirt. Junatic, do you know this? Do you know what this is, this t-shirt? If you know what this is, I will, um, well, I'll be very surprised. I'll say that. So, um, yeah. Anyway, this t-shirt is from my, when I work, my friend, uh, he owns a really Glendale Armenian beer. Yes. Um, my friend owns this uh, company called Insomniac, and they do these massive massive parties if you if, if you ever want to see a party check out my buddy's party called edc 
He does it all over the world, and he does other, like, raves and parties and things like that. Yo, what's up, Lala? Welcome. Yo, Lala, I'm representing you right now in Glendale at Paperback. Yes, that is awesome. Good to see you here. Guys, I got to tell you, Lala is a first-time viewer, so welcome her to the show. She's awesome. She's beautiful. She's one of my good friends here in Los Angeles that I used to work with at the museum. And I'm so, exci I'm so excited that you're here. We did the... Oh, you did, Carlos. That's awesome. So this is from EDC uh, three years ago. I worked for my buddy Pasquale. He owns the company EDC. And, uh, well, that's where the shirt came from. So... Fill you in. Here we go. We're doing the Hollywood Hellcats. Okay. Look at these badass women. Okay. Really tough ass girls. All right. We got. We don't have as many people here because they got screwed up with the time change. But let's go ahead. Let me take a smell of this. Ooh, it's got a very hoppy aroma. Okay. A delicious, a savory flavor that I enjoy. And now let's go ahead and pour it. And I'll show you what it looks like. Now, last week, we did a paperback a West Coast IPA as well. It just wasn't as strong. It was called Raised by Wolves. Okay, so I love the play on their beer. But take a look at this. Do they have that at Total Wine? This one was not at Total Wine. This one I bought at a gas station in Bakersfield. Just kind of stopped over the side of the road, and they had a little micro brew section, and I picked up a few of them. But, um... I'm going to talk to the people over at Paperback, and uh, hopefully, Lala, if you're still here, I'd love to have you join me on that episode. Uh, I'm definitely going to try to actually go to the brewery and pick some up, Carlos. But I'll put down in the description the link where you can go ahead and you can buy it from the brewery or you can buy it. So let's take a look. All right, this beer is definitely looking good. Okay, the West Coast IPA style. <laughs> All right, awesome, Lala. I, I'm, I'm going to hold you to it, so... You know, um, but yeah, let's take a look at it. It doesn't have a giant head going on there. Okay, it is well carbonated. You can see the bubbles forming up to the top. It doesn't have that vortex of gray IPA fermentation going on it. And, um, well, it's light in color, and it smells really hoppy. The aroma off this thing is really fragrant. Let's go in for the first sip, and I'll tell you what it tastes like. All right, Hellcats, they're taking one. Wait, let's look at their slogan before. They're taking down Hollywood one creep at a time. Ooh, good. Good thing I'm not a creep, because I don't want to be taken down by these ladies. Anyway, here we go. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Ah. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's so good. All right. Oh, man. I'm getting all kinds of feeling. Cheers, Junatic from, from Copenhagen. Guys, this is really delicious. My first initial kind of feeling off of this is... It does have a, a really hoppy flavor to it. The smell coming off it is delicious. And um, when you go ahead and you drink it, you're definitely going to get a strong feeling of hops. That IPA flavor, that piney taste. That taste that makes those weird little things in your cheek tingle on the first sip. But it's also really well balanced with a nice citric grapefruit flavor. Now, I don't like a lot of juicy, fruity beers, but this one mixed in there with the IPA, well, I got to say, it's really well done, and I suggest if you're looking for something like this, like a sweet beer with a juicy flavor, but also brings in that IPA taste, much like the Raised by Wolves, this West Coast IPA style from Paperback Brewing is absolutely on point. All right really delicious and i'm pumped up and excited to bring it to you we'll go ahead and finish this beer and i'll give it a score but right away the first sip mm, yeah just hey this is chef okay oh it looks like i'm a little bit younger i still got the box cut <laughs> so i'm um, right now i'm doing a roll for uh for a, a really fun spoof comedy thing so i'm playing an ex-marine park ranger so it's a lot of fun for me and i got this haircut if you're wondering no i'm not bald all right, moving on. Let's get into the COVID news. We're rearing down on this thing. Uh, here in the United States, it looks like uh, COVID shots and vaccinations are coming out. I'm scheduled for my vaccination. Woohoo! Okay, um, now I know that you guys might have some different feelings. 
Look, I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. You do what's best for you. For me personally, I want to get vaccinated because of my living situation. I live with elderly people and because I want to travel. And they're going to make it mandatory to travel overseas. Uh, eventually, if you don't have your vaccine, you won't be able to travel. Uh, well, so, yeah, with your work. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I, I fall into the line of construction, which is not frontline essential work, but it is essential work. So they're going to go ahead and, and allow us to hop into the next tier. And I work in a lot of farm fields uh, in you know, central California sometimes and things like that. So um, being around agriculture and it just, I just walked out and I was able to go ahead and get my vaccination um, scheduled on March 31st. So a little bit over two weeks. Pretty excited about that. Hopefully uh, you guys, if you're going ahead and getting the vaccine, that you're able to get it. If you're not going to get it, I'm sure you have a good reason and um, that's okay. Like I don't look down upon anybody. I don't judge anybody. Um, and, 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 you know, I hope that you guys are all safe. Moving on. Uh, the United States has passed the stimulus package. So, you know, I'm kind of up in the air with this one. I, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, initially you're like, yeah, cool. All right. Um, you get 1400 bucks. That's great. And, and more importantly, not that I need the 1400 bucks, but I'm saying there are a lot of people that need the $1,400. So that pretty much helps a lot of people. But the thing about the stimulus package that I don't understand that is really puzzling to me is there's all kinds of crazy things packed into that thing, labeled in the in, in small writing. All right, cheers from Boulder City. Welcome, Nate. All right, welcome, my friend. All right, so Boulder City, guys. Hey, Rick Fontana is here from Connecticut. Welcome, welcome to the show, Rick. But yeah, so the you know I'm a little curious about how the stimulus package gets passed, how they get these things in there, because if you look in the fine print. I'm all for helping people and stuff like that. But there's all kinds of weird things like us. Hey, Greg Z from Florida, who, who's now in Poland. Welcome to the show. There's all kinds of weird things like us giving money to other countries. I just don't understand. I, I believe we're, we're giving aid to other countries. I'm not 100% sure. Um, if you guys are in need of the stimulus and you get it, I'm happy for you. I just would like a clear um, outline. They should put it on like uh, maybe like national news or whatever. I don't know, and just go through point by point explaining to people. Because in the end, in the end, when we all come back from this thing, I think we're gonna have to end up paying for it a lot. And I wonder if that's one of the reasons we're in debt. Like I said, I'm not a political economist. I'm not a person that um, understands the Constitution. What, what, Nine percent of the COVID. Okay, see. Gas will be four bucks midsummer. Okay, see, these are the things I'm curious about. Like, yeah, they'll give you the stuff now, but where do we pay later? And if you're okay with that, if you feel like you need that right now, then you know, then it's validated and you're justified. But I can't see going ahead and giving all this money, especially like like nine percent tax dollars at work. <laughs> I can't see giving nine percent of people that need it can't spend more than you earn. You must all pay later. Exactly, and that's just it. And why are we giving to other countries? I don't know. I thought I would bring that up. You know, we're not very political here. One trillion bill. Yeah, Lala. See, you know, uh, it's it's crazy. You know, it, it it it's not like we're gonna be able to. I don't know pay that back right away we're gonna have to wait and see guys we're not gonna get too political we're talking beer guys good to have you here if you're just hopping on this is what we're drinking it's paperback brewing hollywood hellcats look at these bad bees right okay they don't want to mess with you she's already got an eye patch going on look at that does she have a mace hey, hey jens from norway welcome to the show guys i gotta say this is so cool that we have we have Lala from the city right here. We have Nate from Boulder City. We have Greg Z from Poland. We got Drunatic because every we got Drunatic, Rick. We got people from all over the world joining in on the show. I hope that you're able to join me for a beer. Cheers to that. Let's do it. Love that can. I know. We're gonna definitely give it a good score, I promise you. It's smooth, guys. It's really good. And I, I really think that. I really want to try to get over. Today is a really fun show for me because I want to get over to Glendale and um, Eagle Rock, which will be the other 
a brewery that we'll be doing today because they are not only here in my city that I live in, but they are also becoming, well, the one has been my favorite brewery for a long time, but th this one is really becoming good. So, um, I hope to get over there. Me and Lala are going to go up there. We're going to we're going to get hammered over there. <laughs> and uh, it'll be a good fun thing and hopefully maybe I can make a uh, make some noise over at paperback and maybe they'll let me do the weekly beer and video review show live at the brewery or at least the video you should score the cans on how easy they are to squish <laughs> well well i don't know about that one greg but but good thought good thought hey guys i want to now bring up uh, the the video that came out on my channel last friday if you haven't checked it out it was only two days ago but guys this place is making waves okay i had no idea about this place i was working in central california in bakersfield let's do it lala um i was working in bakersfield which is it gets a lot of shit because it's a little country and it's not LA, but um, it's actually a really nice little t uh, town. It does have a country element to it, like a cowboy element to it. Um, but I found this place, and this is the video that came out a few days ago, and it's called Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. And to Greg Z's point, chickens don't really have fingers. Lots of great ba Basque food. You know what? That's crazy, Carlos. We're going to bring up, I found a Basque restaurant in Bakersfield that I had no idea about, and I'm excited about going there and reviewing. But um, now that restaurants are open up, I will be going in, and we're going to be laying off the fast food. Danny, what do you think about canceling Dr. Suits? I don't think anything of it. You know, I think it's the exact opposite. I think that um, I think that the people that are upset about Dr. Seuss don't really know Dr. Seuss and what he was about because he was actually the opposite, and he was using his books to go ahead and talk about all the things that, you know, were wrong with the world. So, yeah, I'm going to continue rolling out as many. I'm going to try to do all 44 Dr. Seuss books. I think he's great. I think people are really hung up on trying to be the first ones to blow that whistle. You know what I mean? Like, it was 1940. And things were different, right? Some of the some of the drawings that were were put out there, uh, you know, it, it characterizes Orientalism. You know, you got to put it into context. We we're going to war with Japan. It's not, you know, going on. It, it, it continues to go on right now, right? And it's not good. It's a very very small percentage. For the most part, I'd like to think that all people accept all people, from whatever the race. Uh, uh, religion, okay, where they come from, all that kind of, yeah, I know, no, it's actually Spanish, but the, the main thing is, is that we have evolved, and Dr. Seuss was part of that time, so Calvin, well, welcome, Minnesota in the house, but the main thing is, too, is also, you know, times were different back then, and, and, and instead of canceling everything, and we're going to get into that in a little bit later in the show, um, you know, you got to look at it in terms of that's the way it was, and look how much we've evolved. Look, look how much we've, uh, you know, come forward and recognized that and changed that and changed the perception that we think about other people's race, culture, um, all this kind of thing. Does it still exist? Absolutely. Absolutely it does. But we're getting to the point where we're getting to be able to talk about it, not cancel it, because that's ridiculous. Look at all the good stuff that Dr. Seuss did. That's just my opinion. If you ask, I'll tell you. We're not going to go on to it much longer. I want to talk about the chicken fingers. Guys, check out the Food Friday. You, it, it always remembers me of one of my favorite lines. It's from a movie of one of my favorite movies. It's called Sandy Wexler. It's an Adam Sandler movie. And it was based off of a woman that I know and one of the agents that I knew in the Hollywood scene. And it's Adam Sandler, and he's talking about, like, Sandy Wexler. And more than enjoy the warm weather. Yes, Sandy Wexler was this offbeat, like, agent in Hollywood, and he had these really crazy um, people uh, that he represented and stuff like that. But the funny part is, the funny part is, he says this line, like, um, I forget what happened. Like, one of the people that he was representing left to go open a Starbucks and um and Sandy Wexler goes what's that and then they were like um oh that it's a place that just sells coffee but Sandy Wexler because this tapings in the 90s just sell coffee that's never gonna work <laughs> lo and behold it's uh probably the biggest business in the world in terms of food <laughs> so um when I look at Raising Cane's and at the fact that they just sell chicken fingers you can get a piece of toast you can get some coleslaw, and um, man, 
they do it right. They do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and everywhere. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so funny. If you've never seen Sandy Wexler, it's awesome. It's one of my favorite um, it, top three comedies. It's got one of my favorite actresses in it, uh, Jennifer Hudson. I mean, I don't know if she's considered an actress or more of a singer, but it's just really good. But, but going along the lines of if you just make one thing and you make one thing really good, that's all you need. Right, and that's what Raising Cane's is all about. They're fried chicken, it, it, chicken fingers is just every one of them is just delicious. They use clean oil. They um they use fresh chicken. Drinking cold Starbucks tonight. Nice, Drunatic. Um, yeah. So if you haven't checked it out, please do. Please check that out. I'm interested in what you have to, uh, what you see uh, um, when you when you when you eat Raising Cane's. I don't know if there's anyone in L.A. Um, I guess I could probably use the old Google machine, <laughs> but um, but the one I know is in Bakersfield. I know there's a couple in Los, uh, Las Vegas, and if you get a chance, check out my video or check out the Raisin Canes and let me know what you think. All right, speaking of cancer, uh, can cancel culture, okay, well, let's talk about what got canceled this week. Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> don't think they're on the East Coast. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, it started from Louisiana, and ironically... Um, one of my friends who had saw the video on my Facebook had messaged me, said she was friends with the owner of the very first one in Louisiana. So we're trying to set something up maybe down the line when I get a chance to start traveling more um, that we go ahead and maybe we could revisit something like that. So, um, you know, that's the goal. Continue to grow, um, continue to put out content and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. This is a, it's a marathon. And when people say that, they don't understand fully what they're saying unless you're actually doing the running like it's easy for me to sit back and say oh yeah it's a marathon but if you never run the marathon you'll never know what it's like this thing is going to continue to grow and continue to go um i will not stop i'm going to just continue to to produce movies or i mean uh, videos and, and make stuff and create and yeah this was a tough year because obviously my namesake is travel man dan you couldn't really travel and i don't want to travel half-assed but trust me, I'm telling you, we're going to continue to do this. We're going to continue to go see places around the world, people around the world, and try different foods around the world. And then we're always going to be here live drinking beer. But anyway, Pepe Le Pew got canceled. So back to what you were saying before, Stuart. And the thing I don't understand about that is they're calling it rapey, right? I don't know if that's rapey because, you know, Pepe Le Pew is a skunk. And um, nobody wanted to be around him. I don't think because he was like touchy feely and rapey, like uh, you know, just kind of that vibe. He was a skunk, and he didn't want nobody wanted to get sprayed. <laughs> yeah, exactly, he stinks. Who the hell? I mean, seriously, who the hell wants to be near a stink, a stinky, <laughs> stinky skunk? I'm already drunk. Stinky skunk. I'm already drunk. Holy cow! Wow. Remember, what would you rather? Oh, but guys, I got to tell you something, by the way. So what would you rather is actually inspired and brought to life from Lala, okay? Lala, if she's still here, she is actually the one that kind of brought out the what would you rather in me when we used to work together. We used to work at a museum and we would do these disgusting, really crazy <laughs> what would you rathers. And um, we just had the best time when, I, when we worked on a shift uh, together. Uh, my, my, uh, I got to tell you, my five, six hour shift always brightened up. And I always felt so much happier with Lala being there. And, and we used to play What Would You Rather all the time. And uh, yeah, so, so if Lala, if you're still here, thank you. Because we do a segment each and every week of What Would You Rather. And you are the inspiration behind it. Yeah, <laughs> see, I, I wish I had my original book that I, it's written down on. It's over there, but I used to write all these down. And then Lala would be like the test bunny, if you will, and a few other museum guides. But we always had the funny, the most disgusting, the grossest ones ever. And um, yeah, those were good good times. So cheers to you, Lala. <laughs> and uh, that was awesome. That was a lot of fun. Man, I can't, 
I can't pinpoint what it is. I need to have a specific brewmaster on the show to tell me what exactly is it about West Coast IPA that makes it so delicious. It's the style of beer that I enjoy. Um, a lot of times you're just given an IPA, you just assume that it's an IPA and you grab it and drink it. But, uh, ah, thank you. Love you too, Lala. Thank you. And, um, but yeah, it's... It's something about the West Coast style of IPA. It's a little bit fruity, it's a little bit citricky, and it's a lot of bit hoppy. Absolutely enjoy it. And this beer is like um, the water. Yeah, this beer is like no other. I definitely suggest, if you if you haven't tried this, check it out. Hollywood Hellcats, pretty cool. And um, now I want to bring up some things in the news. Okay, so. Uh, Avatar was, hey, food expert, welcome from, and welcome. Thank you for hopping on the show. We truly have everybody around the world. Thank you so much. But I just wanted to announce that Avatar was re-released in the movie theaters in China. And is now once again, okay, once again is the highest grossing movie ever. It beat out um, the end game by Avengers and is now uh, made in the movie theater or whatever two billion seven hundred ninety seven million five hundred and one thousand three hundred and twenty eight dollars okay that's an enormous number Avatar was awesome I don't know if you remember if you got a chance to see it at the movie theater I went I think I went back to back the first time I went I, I went and had no idea what the movie was I was in such awe over it that the second night I went back, I took a little scissor, you know, <laughs> you know, like all the rappers and they're talking about the scissor. And, you know, I took a little bit of that and went there. I thought it would be really cool and visual. I ended up passing out halfway into it. But the cool thing about the Avatar, I, I don't share with a lot of people and, unless you know me or whatever. But uh, one of the cool things I want to tell you about ago, this would have been like 2002, something like that. Um, my cousin had married a guy who was... Uh, he was an artist, and he worked in the movies, and he did, like, storyboards, and he worked on uh, creatures and things like that. And I went over to their house to pick up my little cousin and say what's up, and, you know, we're going to go out, whatever. And so, you know, being cordial, whatever. Hey, Joe. His Joe was his name. Hey, how you doing? You know, nice to see you, whatever. He's talking to him a little bit. What are you working on? You know, getting the pleasantries out. He's like, I'm working on something up in my room. He had, like, a drawing room up in his room. Like, you know, like a real... Ted Geisel, you know, like just you walk in the drawing table, and so I walk in this room. He's got shit all over the walls, like drawings, you know, robots and mechazillas and all kinds of crazy creatures and stuff and everything. And I see his on his drawing board, and I'm asking, you know, what, what's this? What's what are you working on? And it was like these really long characters, like long arms and like just like a bubble alien head and whatever. And whatever. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, those are really cool. It was all the all ladies, right? They all had, like, long hair and stuff. Well, years later, I come to find out because my cousin told me. She's like, yeah, Joe was working. Joe did all the women in Avatar. And those drawings that you've seen way before Avatar came out, that that, that was it. So I, was, I, I love little stories like that. I love, like, little Hollywood connections. Because here was my friend Joe, my, my, my cousin's husband, and he's grinding away up in his room. He's drawing stuff from, for James Cameron. And he's James Cameron's like right-hand man, and he, and he drew all the Avatar women in that movie. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> um, I always think that's pretty neat, and uh, I like to bring that story up whenever I hear about Avatar. Anyway, rolling on, moving on. I got some sad news. Um, unfortunately, one of my favorite athletes had passed away yesterday. Get me one of those original. I know. I know, man. I don't know where he is these days. I heard that he's working on Avatar 2. But um, I know. Can you imagine? But um, unfortunately, Marvin Hagler, marvelous Marvin Hagler, had passed away yesterday at the age of 66. And if you have ESPN+, Plus, if you can somehow watch it on YouTube, I definitely recommend you watching these two fights. Um, watch when Marvin Hagler fought Leonard Hearns. Okay. Uh, Tommy Hearns, I'm sorry, Hearns, Hearns Hagler, okay, and uh, then watch when he fought Sugar Ray Leonard, okay, awesome fights, I think they took place in about uh, 87 to 88, I remember watching them very vaguely as a kid, um, but uh, I'd followed Hagler's career over time, and it's such a great loss, and uh, he was such a, he's such a 
prolific boxer. Um, you know, he passed away sadly, so rest in peace. Marvelous Marlon Hagler, you will be missed. He was 66 years old. It's unfortunate, too, because combat sports are growing so fast, um, whether it's MMA or boxing looks to be coming back. Um, I read the description of the Hearns fight. Yeah, you, if you have ESPN+, Plus, they offer a whole bunch of uh, archives and fights. And to me, that's, that's why I actually bought it. It was this time last year during the pandemic that I went ahead and said, you know what, I want to watch a lot of boxing, so I want to watch the old boxing. I mean, they got 500... Hey, hey, borrow from India. Guys, we are covered from Asia now. Welcome to the show. Welcome, borrow from India. But yeah, if you haven't checked it out, uh, it made me think about my dear uncle's head painted movie po Yeah, and those are awesome movie posters. Junatik uh, showed me pictures of her uncles that painted all these um, kind of cool noir films in, in Denmark. And, and they're just, it's just something really cool and bitching. And like, you know, <clears throat> to have an artist, you know, that able to draw out of nothing. And that we have it over time is, is amazing. And, and, and I have so much respect for people that are into the art. And I don't mean like myself as an actor or, you know, whether you're a host or whatever. Um, I mean, as like an artist, as a painter, as someone who can draw sculptures. I got to be honest with you. I, 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 you know, there's a lot of weird stuff out there. Thomas Dambo from Denmark creates awesome sculptures where he makes these awesome, amazing uh, trolls and puts them in forests. Because the cool thing about Thomas Dambo as a sculpture, obviously his art is beautiful, but he puts it organically into the woods, into the countryside, and you can make a day of it going to see it. And you're not in this, like, stuffy, hoity-toity, like, uh, art gallery, which is fine. You know, I'll go in there and rock a couple shots down the car before and go into the art show. And, um, yeah, I, I just think Thomas Dambo, you know, you can go out, you can pack a picnic or whatever, and you go see some of his trolls. I think that's really cool. And, um, well, yeah, that's pretty good. That's, um... That's, uh, that's pretty interesting. But anyway, moving on. The Bills re-signed Matt Milano and Williams and the Bills players are taking a pay cut to stay with the team. That is awesome. I love to hear that. I love to hear guys that are willing to stay with the team because they like the culture, because they like the job. They like to stay with this franchise because they feel like the owner is good. And that, for me, as a diehard Buffalo Bills fan, makes me so happy, so proud of that, and um, looking forward to next season already. I cannot wait to August. All right, moving on. All right, so, as I've told you guys before, it is here. I have the software. It's going to be rocking and rolling. We're going to be doing a segment um, called To Eat or Not To Eat. And I'll be piping in people. I'll be piping in Nate. Nate will be doing a segment each and every week where he's going to be doing To Eat or Not To Eat. And, uh, well, he's, it's pretty self-explanatory. He's going to be pulling up some stuff. It may be disgusting, maybe raunchy, rowdy, not interesting, smelly, stinky, skunky, whatever you want to call it. And um, he's going to go ahead and eat it and ask you whether or not you eat it. But the f fun thing is, is we're going to have another person on the segment of the show. We're going to be bringing in a history teacher to do this day in history. So starting next week, we're bringing in two new people. It's going to be so much fun. The show is going to really up its level. Fantastic. What yeah, remote victim. Yeah, it's just going to be... Um, it's going to be fun. But what I wanted to say to you guys are, uh, please, I'm, I'm, I want to bring other people in for the show and tell segment. So whether you're Baro from India, Jens from Norway, if you know anybody in the world from Uganda to Houston, okay, from uh, uh, Frankfurt, <laughs> wink, wink, all right, we'll get into that in a little bit, to Argentina, somebody that you know, please, I'd love to get them on there for the show and tell so we could talk a little bit about their culture. Hey, no, Tenacious Freak, I'm sorry, there was a time change. This is weird, frigged up thing here in the United States. But welcome to the show. We have more Danish in the house. This is so much fun. Aquanuts is in the house. So thank you. All right, guys. But yeah, so please, if you know anybody, Lala, if you know somebody from Armenia, anybody that wants to come on the show, do the show and tell segment. Maybe show me something from their country. Hey, this is uh, such and such, and uh, you know this is you know. Then I'll talk to them a little bit. I'll send them the link. 
Okay, then they'll be standing by on the show, and then when it's time for show and tell, I'll bleep them in. Now, Nate's going to be a regular, and so is BC. It's going to be fun. Um, and, and for those of you guys that have hung with me over the last, especially the year, I think it was Barrow, Greg Z, and uh, uh, Tenacious Freak who hung with me in the early, early days. But um, throughout the pandemic, uh, we've really grown. We've grown quite a bit. I mean, people are showing up. Thank you so much, for Calvin. Um, but now we're going to take that next step. Uh, please, Lava, uh, anybody around the world... If they want to be part of the show, it would be like this. All right, now we're about to go to, um, you know, uh, such and such from such and such country. Boop. And then all of a sudden the screen will split. Over here will be such and such. I'll be over here. We'll talk. I'll put them in front or her in front. And it'll just give you guys as the audience a fun perspective to engage with people from around the world, to, to see a lot of fun stuff, and um, really kind of grow this channel where I intended it to be. Uh, about a year ago, before the pandemic or whatever. But we're waiting for nobody. I'm going to do it. We're here. And next week, it starts with Nate. So if you're interested, please hit me up on the DM. Drop it down in the comment on this video. However, I'm very accessible. I'll always answer back to you. Please, just let me know. You got somebody in mind. I'll send them the link. I'll tell them what time to be ready. And that's it. Okay. So as we continue to grow, we're still staying with the consistency of what we're doing on the show and that brings us to my show and tell and today's my show and tell is a lot of fun and i think it might be a regular now to just post up on this show and guys i want to introduce you guys and i want to show you guys this is not the magic globe this one would not fit in my pocket oh by the way is my father here today hey dad are you there he hasn't said anything. I haven't seen him speak up a little bit. I don't know if Dad's here, but I will say we have 10 people in the room and 10 likes. That is very, very satisfying. Thank you so much for liking this video. I'm not sure if my dad's here, but let's go into the show and tell. The show and tell is really fun for me, and it's going to be a regular staple. And, um, well, I just want to just bring it up. It's an old one, if you will. It's been around since the... the early 80s and guys this is not the magic globe but this is a globe check it out to today's show and tell is my globe this is an old school globe this thing is really neat because when i say old school being from the early 80s it's still got a lot of things like check this out okay i'm gonna bring this over here uh, okay we still have the union of the soviet socialist republics Okay, that is the USSR. And if you're like me, that's the way you knew pretty much Russia. Okay, that's, that's what they called it. Um, some other countries blended in over here. Um, I'm not really sure. There's a lot of like smaller African countries that are still labeled as they were 30 years ago. And um, they haven't split. Um, but that's pretty pretty cool. I love the way this I love the way this globe looks. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right there on the bar next to our cappuccino. Oh, no beard, no hair. No, I got some hair. It's just the square hair. <laughs> I know I shaved. Okay, I shaved because I'm doing a part as a soldier right now in a comedy series. So I had to stay clean. All right, but check that out. We're going to every once in a while spin over to the globe. But that is today's show and tell. Okay pretty fun stuff we're gonna keep it there maybe i should get it a little bit higher and like put it there that way you can see it or now nah, right here is good but um but yeah that's the show and tell and that's what i'm talking about getting people from around the world to go ahead and show me something cool from their country obviously food is really good candy i love to learn about candy from other countries but whatever you want to show me if you can go ahead and spread the word, whatever country you're in, just show them one of the episodes, show them this segment where we do show and tell, and ask them if they're interested. If they are, I'll send them the link, and we'll pipe them on through. Guys, we got a bunch of people in the room. Thank you so much for hanging with me. We are doing the Hollywood Hellcats. This is from the Paperback Brewing Company in Glendale, California. That is, um, I guess, that would be Northeast Los Angeles. So it's a really fun place. It's got excellent Armenian food. A big Armenian American population uh, lives there, and they have awesome like kebabs and barbecue meats and really fun stuff. And uh, yeah, let's go in and try out this 
delicious beer. Different parts of the U.S. is all. Different parts of the U.S. is also interesting. And Stuart, I better see your ass out there, man. I really want to see you live getting some some bees. Oh, Stuart, Lala, do you remember Stuart? Stuart is the beekeeper. Stuart is the beekeeper. Lala, I don't know if you, Stuart, I don't know if you remember. You also met Lala that day when you were waiting to go into the Samuel Ocean Planetarium. Ah, it's and you know one thing I really like about this beer it's just it's just so juicy it's got, it's got such a nice flavor going down and um I really like it, the mixture of the grapefruit aroma and the aroma of the IPA yes I remember yeah that, that, okay reunited welcome to the show all right that's awesome so if you don't know I met Stuart waiting line of course I remember him I want to come with you as far we can still go, Lala. We can still go. Like Stewart, we drive. We drive. It's I forget where it was. Where was it? Water Waterford, Hanford. That was cool, Stewart. Let me know if you got some bees going on this month. Maybe we'll try to come up this month. We'll see about uh, uh, next week or possibly the the week after that or something. Maybe we can come up there and visit. And and if you're gonna be gone in April. Um, you know, maybe we'll have to just uh, try South Dakota. Anyway, moving on, guys. Now it's time for one of my favorite segments, the What Would You Rather show. All right, the What Would You Rather show is a lot of fun. Okay, now that, now that Lala's here, I should have changed it. I should have I should have went really gross, okay? We went really gross in the beginning. And, like, people... <laughs> Wait till the live is go ahead and let me know in the comments your five what would you rather. So now here they are. Okay. What would you rather? Would you rather go to Oak yes, Oakdale and Water Okay. Would you rather go to Melbourne, Australia? Okay. The second smaller city next to Sydney. Okay, heard it's a vibrant place. Heard it's a lot of fun. You're getting too tame now. <laughs> Greg Z, next week I'm coming with something gross. Okay, um, would you rather go to Melbourne, Australia? And as I leaked it earlier, would you rather go to the second tier city in Germany? Oh, so I, I split some queens. I definitely split some queens. Or would you rather go to Frankfurt, Germany? Okay, both are really popular cities. What's up, Stuart? <laughs> both are very popular cities. Both are very um, warm and friendly places, I'm sure. I think that both offer a really vibrant nightlife. I think that there's a lot of cool things to do. I think the food in both of those countries are amazing, especially being American. I think Australian food is very similar and mimics a lot of the American style bars, pubs, things like that. Frankfurt, you might find a little weird stuff going on in Germany. The fact that they speak another language is always interesting. Both cities sound amazing. I've been to Germany. I think it's wonderful. I cruised around Berlin for a few weeks. Uh, Frankfurt four times a year, so I have to go with the other one. So you're going to Melbourne. Okay. Now, for me, I've been to Germany, like I said. And not that I don't want to go to Frankfurt, because I definitely like it. So I think I'll save that, put that in my back pocket, and not duplicate that country. And I've never been to Australia. So not only does that land me on a new city, but it also lands me a new country and a new continent. So I'm going to go with Melbourne, Australia. I don't know too much about it. I know people seem to be happy. I seem they're very similar to a European country with a little twist of a, a little similarities to America. But for me, I've always wanted to see Australia. I'm going with Melbourne. All right, question number two. Just work, 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 Lala. <laughs> yeah. All right, question number two. Oh, this is this takes a picture. All right. Which would you rather eat? Okay. Which would you rather eat? Both of these look amazing. Both of these taste amazing. I believe I've had both of them at some point. So, guys, which would you prefer to eat? Which would you rather? Would you rather eat Peruvian ceviche? Now look at this, okay? You look at this delicious, fresh dish, okay? Melbourne in December, nice. Lala, go for, go for it, Lala. 
Don't wait. Go for it. All right. This is ceviche from Peru. And I'll take a look. This is all types of raw fish. Over here, you got some clams. And you got some shrimps. You got some corn. I think that's a little bit... Yeah, those, those are chopped carrots. Some cabbage in there. Okay. Look at this delicious, fresh dish. Now, the fish is raw, but they squeeze a ton of lime juice on it, which helps go ahead and kind of... I don't know if the word is coagulate, but it does something by cooking it uh, with the lime and the citric acid. Goes ahead and cooks the raw fish, but still is raw. I don't know if that makes you squeamish, if you absolutely love that. I love sushi, sashimi, no problem. But check it out. Is this number five? No, this is number two. This is number two, what would you rather? So we have Peruvian ceviche, or, okay, this one's hard to pronounce. This one is delicious. This one is definitely, um, if you're one of those people like around Thanksgiving or other places that don't like their food touching, I'm not sure if you're gonna like this one. But let me introduce you to number two. Would you try the Korean bibimbap? Okay, bibimbap, did I say that right? Okay, a number five for me, check that out. That is Korean bimbap beep. Did I say it? bibimbap? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I've had Peruvian feature. Calvin, how is it? Look at this. Okay, so this is... Now, you see this is in a bowl, right? And you can see underneath all this is white rice. On top is an egg yolk right here. Right here is seaweed. Over here are all kinds of fresh vegetables. You got spinach, carrots, you got mung beans, you got mushrooms, you got sliced cucumbers. And what you do is you put the like Korean red sauce and then you mix it all up. And oh man, this thing is delicious. And you can add it with meat. Um, you can add it with uh, with beef, the bulgogi. It's delicious. It's got tons of flavor going on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's bibimbap. Okay, bibimbap. Okay, very hard to pronounce sometimes, but uh, I think I got it. So yeah, would you try the bibimbap? The be <laughs> bam bop, or would you try the Peruvian ceviche? Now it's a tough one for me because they both look delicious and they're both like that style of mix it up and eat it all in once. But um, I love this. I eat it all the time. Korea and um, Koreans here in Los Angeles have a huge population. Hell, I live in a Korean house, so we eat this often. I really enjoy it. But for me, I absolutely love seafood, and Peru is on my top three places to visit right now. So I want to go to Peru so bad, not only to go hiking and climb Machu Picchu, but I want to eat ceviche. I want to go ahead and destroy this seafood. And um, yeah, I know it's, it's kind of um, worrisome that you had, you go ahead and you eat raw fish, but oh my gosh, this looks delicious. You're not into the raw fish? Well, you're from, you're from Denmark, okay? You should definitely like the fish, <laughs> but this is, they're both very good, but for me, I'm going with the Peruvian ceviche. All right, number three, Tenacious Freak, number three. So, here we go. This is a little bit of music. Which would you rather? Who do you rather, who do you prefer to listen to, okay? Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey? Oh, man, both pop divas, both pop superstars, um... One kind of was ending as the other one was rising. Um, they, were, they, they had a peak. Yeah, okay, please, I want to try that one. Uh, yeah, that sounds delicious. Um, I haven't been to a Korean barbecue in a very long time, so maybe that might be a nice introduction back. But um, who do you prefer? Do you prefer Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey? I like both. I'm not going to say I love both. Well, I will say this. I love Whitney. <laughs> yes. Oh, la, la. Yes. <clears throat> I'm an agreement. <clears throat> I actually love Whitney Houston. Um, it's kind of the weird kind of thing. <laughs> I, uh, if you don't know me, you probably would never know. I probably wouldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Whitney Houston is one of my favorites. Obviously, uh, her, her rendition of the Super Bowl national anthem, and I believe it was 92. You've been to Ukraine? No, I haven't been to Ukraine. I cannot wait to go. Last week, we did a Ukrainian beer uh, from Lev. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, when I first lived in New Jersey, I ate a lot of ethnic foods, especially of Indian foods. Oh, Indian foods are amazing. All right. Indian foods are amazing. Whitney Houston, yeah, we're getting a lot of... You know, I like Mariah Carey. And, um, you know, I don't know 
if a lot of remembers, but Whitney showed up, or uh, Mariah Carey showed up at uh, the observatory. It's so funny. Your bodyguard came into me. I was working the. And he's like, "Hey, man," and I was like, "Hey, what's up?" And he's like, "I got Mariah Carey here," and uh, he's telling me, you know, she needs private security entrance to the back, and I was like. I telling him where to go, and I called the, you know, our managers, or whatever, and, and then I told him at the end, I said, you, you know, not for nothing. I heard she's no longer with Nick Cannon, so you know, if she's interested, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty valuable right now. <laughs> anyway, you gotta shoot your shot, isn't that what the young kids say? All right, on a tick and tock. All right, here we go, making jokes. For me, Whitney Houston. All right, that's who I would prefer. Uh, I was about, <laughs> she was a uh, seven inch heels. Yeah. Okay. Crazy, man. But, um, you know, moving on. Got an old Paula Abdul LP. Wow. That's pretty cool. I worked with Paula Abdul before on the show. It was a long time ago. Um, it was a long time ago. It was a show called Charmed. It was with Alyssa Milano and I forget the other girls. They were like witches and stuff. And that episode, Paula Abdul had been on. And, um, and, and I was working with her. I was, I was a dancer in the nightclub. I was just a background extra. But I was working right next to Paula Abdul. And uh, she's like really, really little. But um, very nice, very sweet, pleasurable to talk to. Nice to me. And um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. All right, moving on with number four. Number four is Pets. Okay, do you have pets? Do you like pets? What do you have as a pet? But which would you rather prefer as a pet? Do you prefer fish? Okay, any type of fish. We're not talking like uh, crustaceans and stuff. So no crabs, no lobsters, no... So just straight up fish. Aquarium of fish. Or do you prefer birds? Okay, now you can have huge toucans. You can have giant... Um, you know, parakeets, you can have all types of birds where you keep them in the cage, you let them fly around, I don't know. But if you have pets, and if you had all these two pets, which would you prefer? Would you prefer fish, or would you prefer uh, birds? So, that's a tough one, because fish are beautiful. Uh, the industry experience here in Taiwan, I love Well, thank you, Frank. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'll keep going, man. You know, it's funny, because I was talking to my acting coach yesterday, and, um, and he told me, you know, you may not have made it now. You don't know when it's going to happen. But you're in the game and you're working at it. And somebody's going to pick you if you continue to go. And throughout that, you're enjoying it. Like, I enjoy this, you know, the process, the hunt. Would I like to be picked right now for a movie or a show? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But until then, I'm working like nobody's even watching me. And, um... And through that, you do gain a lot of weird experience throughout the industry, stories, things like that. Um, you know, anyway, birds is loud as fuck. <laughs> yeah, birds will be chirping. Um, get skunk or a pet raccoon. <laughs> That's a good idea. I've always wanted a pet pig, like a little oinker. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, I, I like them both. But the upkeep, okay? The upkeep, yeah. Thank you, Calvin. Take that. Whatever you're doing. Like I said, if I'm giving you advice, it's not just I'm coming from my world as an artist, as an actor, you know, in the grind of Hollywood, which is a really hard thing. But take that advice and apply it to whatever your life is, whether you're in IT, whether you're in sales, whether you're in architectural, you know, continue to pursue what you dream of, what you, what your passion is, what you want to do in life. And, um, the pinnacle of it will come, okay? You'll get to the top. But during that, you know, you have all these other uh, fun experiences throughout your life. So never look down on it if you're going after what you're going after and what you love to do. All right, so going back to what would you rather for me? I love fish, but the upkeep is horrible. So I'm going to go with a bird. I love birds. I, I, you know, I got a couple, Pat Raccoon. I got a couple of birds. I'm so excited they're back, guys. I don't know if you remember last year around this time I talked about it on one of the live shows. I have these birds and they fly into this little nest above the the like uh, apron skirt thing that covers our house. And they built a nest and they had babies. They had freaking little bird babies. And I heard them chirping. There was like four of them. And one of them actually fell out right in front of me. Like fell, I don't know, 12 feet bounced off the toolbox and sat there and was like dazed, literally sat there. I tried to give him or her a Dorito, but um, they weren't interested. I sat there for like a half an hour watching them 
and then he flew away. But I watched this evolution happen. I watched the birds build the nest, lay the eggs. The mom would lay on it every day. As I got near it, it would fly away, then it would come back. Then they, they hatched, they were chirping, and they would feed them like with the worms and stuff. But they're back. They're freaking back. Yes, the papa is back. He sits on the fence right next to the nest. He's got like a red breast and a red throat and then the brown one goes in there and I don't know what she's doing if she's prepping if the eggs are already laid or what the hell is going on in that little nest I don't want to get on a ladder and disturb it I just kind of look at it in, in awe but I'm so excited I'm so excited for these little birdies to come back I don't know why I just think that's really cool when you watch like life happen through the animal world and you're able to observe it Shortly after that, we also had about six possums behind the refrigerator. So I had to call animal control on them. They could be a little weird. Um, but anyway, moving on, number five. Number five is the gross one. It's not too gross. Lala, if I knew you were going to be here, I would come with some disgusting one with blood, boogers, and earwax. But this one is not that kind of one. Um, this one is, um, well, it is kind of gross if you look at it. Next cam. Nest cam. Ooh, good idea. The nest cam, okay? No possum. I, I should. Okay, I'll wait till the, the, the chicks are there. I'll wait, wait and make sure, and then I'll give you a nest cam. All right, so guys, this one. Which would you rather eat? Okay, a giant bowl, okay? A giant, <laughs> a giant bowl of earthworms, okay? Just your fishing worms, gross little worms, and you got to scoop them out and you got to eat them. And they're bursting open, right? It's not like a gummy worm. When you, they burst open, they're tasting like the earth, like dirt, like mud. And they're black and they're just juicing out and their guts and everything is just sliming out and whatever. Or would you prefer to eat a bowl of centipedes? Where you're going in there and you're just and they're still moving around and they're like and they got all the little the little feet and the little legs and they're like this and they're tickling the inside of your mouth and as they're going down um and no we never had this one <laughs> and, we, and they're tickling all over and uh and they're crunching down on it and it's like they have that that hard shell okay they have that hard shell and you're biting down on it and they're crunching and they're also oozing out a little bit um we did caterpillars versus worms but we never had the centipedes so which would you prefer a bowl of earthworms or a bowl of centipedes um i'm very curious about this one because i watched a guy in a guinness book of world records both are better than miller genuine Jack. oh no <laughs> oh the earthworms have yes okay it was the earthworms versus the centipedes yes okay i'll eat the bowl empty <laughs> no you're right, tenacious freak. You are definitely right. But that's okay. I'm going to bring back time to time. Um, but yeah, so would you rather eat worms or would you rather eat um, a bowl full of centipedes? That one's tough. I don't like the crunchy legs of a centipede. They've always been kind of turned me off. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the bowl of earthworms. All right, that's my what would you rather. Let me know. I'd rather eat the glass <laughs> <laughs> that's funny all right guys this is what we're drinking it's from paperback brewing company in glendale california um genetic loves this <laughs> that's hilarious um we are drinking the hollywood hellcats west coast ipa is 7.1 as you can tell i haven't eaten breakfast and we are drinking so i'm getting a little buzzed i'm gonna go ahead and swig this down and we're gonna go ahead and give it a score worms for the life of me <laughs> sorry sorry lala you're no stranger to this cool label bring it closer all right let me give you a, a full label look as i judge it. okay there's paperback we got this bad b okay look at her all right and she's got a mace okay so that is the label of the Hollywood Hellcats. And I gotta be honest with you, when I was walking through the gas station in Bakersfield, I saw this, okay, and I was drawn to it. And um, really, I cannot wait to go to this brewery and tell them what a great job for, for yeah. <laughs> because they do a sensational job. And um, I'm happy that it's right down the road for me. And, you know, I, I, if anything, I get to talk to the manager and tell him I love your beer. All right, here we go. Taste. 
all right? The taste on this beer is phenomenal. It's exactly what I'm looking for. It's that weird uh, mixture of just enough citric grapefruit flavor. It's got a ton of complexity going on as you swig down each and every sip. You flavor uh, a lot of hops going on. You flavor a little bit of pine taste. Your palate is washed down with the citric juicy um, flavor of a grapefruit. Really enjoyed it. If you're looking for a nice beer on a hot day like this beer, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to drink seven or eight of them because you'll probably be face down in the mud. But two or three on a hot summer afternoon, you're going to be loving life. It brings you that warm IPA cheeky feeling. I can already see my cheeks getting red. It kind of gives you that happy feeling. Really nice stuff. And probably one thing that I did notice about the West Coast IPA is it doesn't give you those frantic nightmares that IPAs give you. Um, I don't know if that's something to do with the fermentation of it, but I love it. I love this beer. And I'm going to go ahead and give the taste a 4.0. 4.0, solid score. Definitely happy with this one. Now the price. Now the price last week, what did we give the, the beer last week? We gave the beer last week a 3.5. Because the can was $5.29. Pretty expensive, right? But here's what I'm going to do. Because the beer last week was 6.1%, you're getting another percent alcohol with this one at 7.1. So you're getting a stronger beer at the same price, like twenty-three cents. add a little tax here or there. You're looking at about $5.40 a, a can of beer. If you buy this in the brewery, it's probably going to be around $8 to $11 per pint. Okay. Then on top of that, you're still taxing. So if you divide the tax, it's going to be probably anywhere from about $10 to $13 for one pint. I don't mind, especially now, to go into a brewery, especially a brewery I like, and go ahead and tip people and drink and overpay a little bit. But if you're buying the can at $5.40, it's not a bad price because it's a delicious beer and it's a strong beer. So it'll get you to where you want to go faster. I definitely like that. I like that this brewery is here in, uh, in, in uh, Los Angeles. And because of the price, um, that's expensive, right? It's not super expensive, but like picture this. Like say you really like this beer, right? And you're strong. One of the things I take into the equation is all right, can I drink six of them? Now, if I drink six of these, I might be flat face down in the mud, okay? Or, you know, I'll be very sick. Or probably say some things that I want to take back at the end of the night. But one thing about buying six of these cans is you're probably looking at $32 for a six-pack. Now, that gets expensive, right? Who's got that kind of money? Not me, not yet. All right, but... One can is not a bad score at $5.40 because it is strong. So if you start off with one of these or maybe two of them, 10 bucks, whatever, that's thrown into the bank. You don't even think about it. But seriously, that's not a bad price. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and I'm also going to give it a 3.5. Now the design, okay? Popeye then, <laughs> face down in the mud with the worms. Yeah, it's pretty much it, Greg. You know, wrapped around a volleyball net. All right, let's take a look at the design. Now, this is a bitchin' design, man. This is this is an awesome design, much like... Oh, shit, I ripped the paper. All right, much like last week, this was a really good design. I love that they use this can, and they make it on stickers, okay? And it just labels the sticker. So it's not imprinted. It's probably cheap for them to make. But when I say cheap for them to make, I'd prefer that they use a cheap can and a cool label because they can spend more money on the art. And this art is cool. You got a couple of really hot ladies in some skimpy outfits. Sorry, please don't be offended. All right. Um, they're taking down Hollywood creeps one at a time. It's kind of a spin-off of all this shit that's been going on the last two years with all these Hollywood executives thinking that they can just whip out their wiener and enforce it on an actress. At that, I don't stand for it. I think it's disgusting. Midnight snack. Uh, <laughs> but um, but pretty cool. I love that the, it's a West Coast IPA. It labels right here the um, alcohol percentage. Just a really cool label. The fact that it drew me to it, I think it's cool. I think it's kind of a spinoff of, um, what was the DC character? Uh, high, uh, 
Haley, you know what I'm talking about, the 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 Joker's girlfriend. All right, it's kind of a spin-off of that, kind of a spin-off of the Warriors. None take it. Thank you, Calvin. I appreciate that. Really nice design, much like the last one. Really good design. And, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and because it's got... The, it, because it was the one to draw me close and it's got these hot ladies on there, I'm going to go ahead and give it a score of a 4.0 on the design. Now, the accessibility. The accessibility, like I said, if you're here in Los Angeles, it's pretty good. Around the world, I don't know if you're going to be able to find it in India. You're probably not going to find it in places in Africa. You're definitely not going to find it in the lower jungles of Brazil. So the accessibility is not very common. Now, on the, on the we're talking about the intercontinental United States. I don't even know if you can find it there. But here on the West Coast in the state of California, yes. So accessibility is going to be lacking. I'm going to go ahead and give it the same score as I did right raised by wolves and we're going to go and give it a score of a 2.5. Not very accessible. Hopefully by my promotion of this video, hopefully by me visiting the brewery, hopefully that I'll continue to pump out this brewery cuz you know, I don't stand behind shit that I don't like and I definitely like this brewery and I like that it's right down the street and me and Lala are going to do a video there. So um yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. But right now, it's not accessible. Now, the TMD X Factor. The fact that it's Hollywood Hellcaps. <laughs> yeah, I would buy it just for the label. Right. That's what I wanted to say. You would just buy it just for the label. Just to try it. You know, let's be honest. The TMD X Factor. Just for the label, I would buy it. It's got three hot broads on there. Whipping a mace, baseball bat, and a sword. Pretty cool. They're taken down the Hollywood creeps one at a time and you know why I why I think that's important is not because I'm gonna stand up here um, and, and be some kind of social justice warrior but the thing is is I am an actor in Los Angeles and I have a lot of uh, friends that are women okay and they are also actors actors actresses here in Los Angeles and they have to deal with these scumbags like Harvey Weinstein and all these other people that think that just because you're a producer and you can whip out your wiener that you should be able to go you know do it uh, have sex with these women or force I you know I don't want to get too convoluted into the social part of it and whatever but what I will say is they are friggin creeps and I don't like it I don't like the fact that my friends might be put in an uncomfortable position by some scumbag just because he's a producer or whatever the case is. Now, I'm not going to say that's for all of them, okay? Not going to be like me too for everybody, but it does happen. And I think that's cool. I think that they put it out there. He's kind of neat. And I love the fact that this label says 7.1%. All right? Now you're talking TMD style. So, <clears throat> in fact, the paperback, they leave, they, they leave it right there. The brewing company, the, the the place is in Los Angeles. It's in Glendale, a part of town I like. I definitely am enjoying it. Now, last week, I gave the Raised by Wolves a 4.0 score. Hey, you saying you were just a black... Why are you saying this? Exactly. You know what, Freak? Or Greg? It's it's weird, you know? I, I, I'm not afraid to come out and say it and stand up for the, the, the women that are in this business. Now... Do I know everything? No. But I do I think it does happen to some ladies? Yes. The casting couch has been a, a thing in Hollywood for as long as I started, okay? And I don't think that's right. I think that's um, you know, putting a woman in a position like that is a uh, is a tough call because also too we don't know who is right and wrong in these situations. We're not there, but that's a whole other that's a whole other story. I think calling out these creeps especially Harvey Weinstein and all that kind of stuff. I think that's great. Um, so that's what they're doing with that label. I love the label. I love the TMT factor. I love that it's in here. And um, and I stand behind that. So I'm not afraid to say it. But I'm going to go ahead and give the TMD factor a 4.5. 4.5 is the TMD factor. Let's total this sucker up and get into the second half of the show. Massix. All right, 4.0, 4.0. This takes me a little bit to do the math, so give me a second. Whoa. 
Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. Okay, not a bad score at all. Holy moly. Catch a totally. Guys, we are doing good. We have exactly the same score as the authentic arithmetic is. <laughs> I thought you were saying authentic. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at arithmetic. What are you going to do? Guys, we have the same scores we gave raised by wolves. And that's only because the accessibility has brought the score down. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the score. I gave it an 18.5. It is an awesome score. It is a great score. It reaches above par. Par for this channel of being a good beer would probably be a 17 and 18.5. For this paperback Hollywood Hellcats is an amazing score. I love this West Coast IPA. I hope that you enjoyed that review. And now it's time to go on with the second beer of the show. And the second beer of the show is going to be a lot of fun because it is one of my favorite breweries. It is one of the best places for me. Thank you, Tenacious Freak. It is one place that I've been a couple of times. I used to go there and I love this place. Yes. Woohoo. All right. Let's get there. Let's get it. So, but I, like I said, I really love this place. This is another place just down the road for me. Just down the road from Paperback is another great giant brewery called Golden Road Brewery here in Los Angeles. I believe it's Echo Park or Silver Lake. It's this giant like mega beer hall that you'd see probably in Europe. And um, well, we've done beers like this before on this show. And we're going to be bringing out another one called the Hazy Pup IPA Golden Road. Now check it out. Don't get all crazy and try to cancel me with the, with the Siberian Husky. The sun is in his eyes. He needs the glasses. But yeah, I'm really excited about this one. Let's go ahead and crack it open. I'll tell you what it smells like. I'll pour it, show you what it looks like, and then I'll taste it and tell you what it tastes like. Ooh, baby. Man, that sucker is piney. Oh, it is in Glendale. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so this one is in Glendale. It's right down the road then from paperback. This hazy, hazy IPA is 4.0%. Okay, so it's not too strong. It's going to be really cloudy. Look at this one. Let's take a look at it. So small, I know. It's just a 12 ouncer, but that's all right. Look at this one. Okay, look at that haziness. Very light. Okay, off of the pour, you got a lot of carbonation. Now, we've talked about these hazy IPAs, and then a lot of times they're made on just appearance by cranking up the milk lactose and making them hazy. It has no significance to the taste or the, uh, or the, um, the strength of the beer, but it definitely has the look. It's like, check out my beer. Look at it. Snap, snap, Instagram. Look at me. Big friggin' deal. You drink beer and you post it on social media. All right, check it out though. Pretty nice looking beer. Kind of looks like something that you would see in like um, the Mandalorian or a Star Wars video or, you know, something sci kind of sci fi, right? I'll take one of those lemon yager yungways. You know, just some, some kind of weird language. But um, even though it's only. 4.0% uh, alcohol. I definitely smell a lot of hops going on. So let's go in for the first taste and I'll tell you what it tastes like. Okay. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. It's weird. It's got a lot of citric going on in it. Okay. Drunken man Dan. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, Drunatech. But soon. It's got a lot of citric flavor going on to it. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the hazy IPAs. Starting to like them here and there. Um, hit or miss. Love Golden Brew, or Golden Road Brewery. My first sip of this one initially isn't that, that good. Okay, I don't, nothing draws me out on it. I, th I think it's got a bit of a unfamiliar taste to it, and I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know if that's the fermentation that they use. With the hazy, the complexity of it is, well, there is a lot of flavors going on there. I just can't distinguish exactly what I'm tasting. All right, so, them freak glasses are just too big. Don't worry, freak. I have something special for them. I held off again. 
All right, and that what that's what brings us to preview the videos that are coming out this upcoming week. Guys, stand by. We are not putting out a regular scheduled video on Friday because it is a, I can never finish that game. Way too strong for me. Really? Yeah, it, it's only 4.0%. So you would have a tough time with the other one. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> one cool thing about this one is it's only 105 ca calories. So... Working on my abdominals. Um, steam to farewell with this beer. But what I wanted to tell you is we're not going to be putting out a regular scheduled Travel Man Dan. It will come out the following week. So it will be out on Friday the 26th. Next week we'll be doing just one beer. We'll be doing the fun show that I do where I just do one beer. And it's a holiday edition. And we'll be doing it on Wednesday the 17th to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So... If you have an Irish beer, if you have something delicious and fun to drink down, please hop on the show for St. Patrick's Day. It'll be at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we're going to be doing it live. I'm going to be drinking, I'll tell you right now, it's going to be a combination of like a Guinness and something. We're going to be doing something fun. I'm going to be doing it with the big old mugs, that tenacious freak. Yeah, so please hop on, join me for an Irish beer it's a shorter show. We don't do all the segments. We don't do all the stuff. We just come on raw, uninterrupted. I drink the beer. Uh, I gotta go to work. Have a good day. Hey, Stuart, thank you. Thank you for ho hopping on. Nicholas, welcome to the show. Thank you, Stuart. Nicholas, this is what we're drinking. We're drinking Wolf Pop IPA. All right, guys. So if, you, if you're not doing anything, this Wednesday... We always go by California time because I'm going from my time that I live in Los Angeles, 7 p.m. So just go to your world clock and your, on your iPhone or your Android. Check out what time it is, what time it will be for you. If you can hop on, great, or hit that notifications button. But we will be drinking Irish beer. Um, I suggest, bye, Stuart. Um, I'll be dressed up in some fun Irish outfit. I don't know. Well, we're not going to get too crazy. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to join us. I should have probably wore this for the Irish eyes, eh? Irish like this hat, but uh, but we have something else. I have another fun Irish hat, but uh, yeah. Anyway, hope to see you there. That's what we'll be doing next week. All right, now we're getting into Barrow's favorite, This Day in History. And guys, I'm going to be bringing BC on for this segment, so this may be the last time I'm bringing you This Day in History. And if BC can't make it regularly, I'll find a history teacher, I'll find a history professor, but let me bring you this last one. Ladies and gentlemen, on this day in history, March 14th, we're going to bring it way back, all the way back to 1590, when the Battle of Ivory, French King Henry IV beats Catholic League during the French Wars of Religion. Wow, that's some crazy medieval stuff, right? 1590, shields and swords and all kinds of... Battle of Thrones, no, Game of Thrones stuff, right? That is some crazy stuff. But on this day in history in 1590, the Battle of Ivory, um, the French King Henry IV beat the Catholic League. And, um, well, the French Wars of Religion, if you want to go ahead and research it more, you're more than welcome to. But that's what happened on this day. Oh, remember that like it was yesterday. <laughs> exactly. But you always got to throw those ones in there, right? Because... When we watch all these cool movies and hopefully movies that I'm going to be able to get a chance to go ahead and play. Maybe I'll play Henry IV. Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? Friggin' awesome. Um, I, I would love that. But anyway, here we go on this day in history, March 14th. Holy moly, you're not going to believe it. German Ferdinand von Zeppelin receives a U.S. patent for the navig <laughs> navigable balloon. Okay, the Zeppelin. The Zeppelin, okay? On this day in history, in 1899, Ferdinand von Zeppelin got the patent to make this huge, like, all right, a lot of times we refer to it as a blimp, but it's actually called a Zeppelin, okay? So on this day in history, he got the patent. Uh, the, you know I like inventions, and you know I like when people pursue their invention and get it, and oftentimes we just kind of forget that before we actually see the finished product, somebody had to think it, Go through the process of how to present it and then get in the patent and invent it. So on this day in history, that's what happened. We'd love to have a beer on a Zeppelin. I know. I would love to be on a blimp. I, you know, it's like, it's one of the things you don't see a lot of people on unless you're in the blimp life. 
you know, like you see a lot of people on videos, you can find videos on, on, on balloons and things like that, but a blimp, right? And when you see those old photos, of like you got the blimp and then you got the restaurant down below. Oh, I love that, man. I love that so much. Um, uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll get a chance to get on a blimp one day. All right, on this day in history, in 1922, thank you, Danny, for acting like a great history teacher. Ah, oh, thank you. You know, I, I think it's cool. You know, a lot of people find it useful information, might intrigue people, might make a uh, spark of uh, curiosity. And, um, you know, it's always cool and interesting to learn new things, no matter where you learn them from, whether you learn them from your teacher, professor, uh, YouTube, or some kind of uh, jabroni like myself. <laughs> but anyway, on this day in history, and March 14, 1922, WGRAM in Buffalo, New York, begins to broadcast. Why is that significant? Why is that significant? Because that's the radio station I listen to every day. All right? Every day on my phone, I listen to my home radio station in Buffalo, New York. It is called now WGR55. I have my niece. Wow. Hi. Welcome. Ah, WGR55 is without a doubt my number one listening station to and in 1922 it was created so if you guys haven't checked out radio.com check it out because it allows me to listen to buffalo sports radio um all the cool stuff that's going on with the bills and the sabers and uh 1922 on this day in history it, it was started right it was the first time they aired so Next year will be um, 100 years. Wow, I didn't realize it. 99 years they've been on the air. All right, moving on. This day in history, March 14th, 1950, the FBI's most wanted fugitives program was started. It was began. Okay, so, you know, FBI was a federal bureau of investigation. They handle cases that the local police, local state police can't handle, and it's all countrywide, but the FBI's most wanted was created. It was a list of 10 people that they couldn't catch, that they eluded them, whether it was in Minnesota or Texas, whether it was in South Carolina or California. The FBI covers all of that, and they go after you, and you don't want to be on that list. But on this day in history, in 1950, it was be started. On this day in history, March 14th, 1991, the Dave Matthews Band performed their very first show as part of a benefit for the Middle East Children's Alliance in a bar called Tracks in Charleston, uh, Virginia. So, if you don't know, I, I'm a huge Dave Matthews fan. I love that they have like real professional musicians, like they could perform in symphonies and harmonics, and um, and then Dave Matthews and their songs. Uh, it's kind of a 90s thing. They became really trendy towards the, the fraternities and things like that. But in the early days when Ants Marching came out in like 80, 90, I think it was, 1990, I absolutely loved this band. I gravitated towards them. And uh, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. But on this day in history, on March 14th, 1991, they performed their very first show. All right, on this day in history, and on March 14th in 2013, Xi Jinping became the new president of the People's Republic of China. And I was there, I was in China when he was inaugurated. Um, he is now currently the, still the president of China. And um, I remember that day. The Chinese were very proud. They, were, they, they saw the direction that their country was going in. Um, the, the old leader had left and they felt this, this sense of hope and uh, as, well... Here in America, we're often divided when a president takes over. But in China, it felt like the entire country was united with Xi Jinping becoming the new president. So on this day in history, that's what happened. I experienced that firsthand inside the community, inside what was happening. And it was an interesting perspective because a lot of people beg on a communist government. But, you know, I never felt so free in my life when I was in China. And I think Jens can also... Uh, maybe agree with me on that, but maybe you were over there during that. But it was very interesting to be part of that government structure in a foreign country, being a foreigner, and to try to kind of make sense of it all. Because oftentimes we're so just crazy here in the United States about our politics, especially the last few years, that you never even get time to stop and think 
and e either appreciate it either which way or understand it. But as a foreigner in a country that I knew nothing about, I knew nothing about their government structure other than what people have told me, to watch it happen to unfold, well, it was quite interesting, I got to say. That's something special. Yeah, it is. I mean, you may not see that ever in your life. You may be in that box, as they say. People never live outside the box. And when you travel, when you go around the world and you see things, Xi Jinping might be the president for another 30 years. Um, I can say I remember when I was there and when that happened. Um, it's just interesting. Safe to be a foreigner in China. It's absolutely safe. Super safe. Never felt safer in my life. I feel more unsafe here in Los Angeles. Anyway, we're drinking Golden Road Brewery. Look at this thing, dude. It really looks like... You know, uh, like a lemonade or an old pee glass laying around your room. Not that anybody should pee in the room in a glass, but it just, that haziness gives it that weird look. Um, on the spectrum of beers, when you look at beers, this is a very different looking than a lager, and it's much different tasting. But let's go ahead and swig it down, and I'll tell you what I think. Most, China, most young Chinese speak speak English. Most young Chinese are very fluent in English and um, well I should say most um, you know ones that are educated and go along with the flow yeah they're they, they're they're very well spoken in English so um, it, it's a tough call if you look at it in terms of population no because the population is so massive over there but in terms of people that you're going to run into as uh, because you're a foreigner yeah you're gonna find a lot of people do speak English in China and um, I think it's one of the coolest places in the world, and you should definitely check it out if you're ever thinking about traveling. Um, very, very interesting. All right, moving on. Guys, now it's time for what are you reading, what are you watching? Let me know down in the comments what you're reading and what you're watching. This is what I'm reading. I've brought it up on this show before. I'm bringing it back because I, I got away from it in a while. I just needed some light, easy reading that put me in a frame of mind of the old, old West. So I'm bringing back Comstock Lodge by Louis Lamar. I love this book. I love the author. It just it takes you through the old West when it was developing and what it was like for a broken down man to meet a wife and start a family on the ranch and then run into some troubles with the outlaws and that kind of stuff. And I just I really love to put myself in my imagination through a book like that because well when you read something like this as an actor I kind of always find which character I would be if this was a movie and these are the light kind of easy reads that I enjoy it's a story it's a fun thing and I feel like I'm actually watching a movie as I'm reading this book and it's enjoyable I love the old west um, you know I'm a big advocate of reading not just reading man Dan kid stories but me personally, I feel like being a good reader allows you to have a strong vocabulary, allows you to be able to uh, communicate a little more easily. And one, most of all, to have your imagination sparked and throughout a book. I think that's really important, not even just for kids, but for adults, right? You could be hung up on something in your life that is stressing you out, that is making you uncomfortable, uh, you know, it, it's not making you easy. And uh, I think I'm about to read the book, Char Chatterbox. Cool. Yeah, check it out, man. Your man, Dan. Oh, dude, check that out. Yeah, Dan Kerr is awesome. I love Dan Kerr. Um, but it's one of those things that you, you may not need medicine in your life. You may not need doctor or you may not need uh, psychological help. You might just need a good story and book to take you away from everything to expand that part of your imagination. So oftentimes people are in a lull and they feel down and depressed and unmotivated and they feel like, you know what, I need this, um, this self-help book or I need this book how to tell me how to live my life better and things like that. That may not be what you're needing. Might be, but it may not be what you need. What you might need is for your imagination to just be tapped and thrown in a completely different direction. Think about the movies that you like. Think about the television shows that you like. Find a book of a story like that and just throw your mind over there. Get it off all this heavy shit that's going on in your heart and in your mind and just put yourself out there and, and really put yourself and your imagination into play and to start working completely different from what your ordinary life is. And I guarantee you're going to find some type of satisfaction. Oh, hold on a minute. Guys, can you give me one minute? I got to go answer this. <laughs> give me one minute. All right. 
So, please take a look at my coffee machines. I'll be back in two minutes. I got to go answer this door. Hold on. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. Well, I'll be done in a minute. Can you give me like 20 minutes? I'll be done. Yeah, I just have to finish this up. All right. No, 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 20, 20 minutes, I'll be done. Yeah. All right. You should watch it. It's called Travel Man Dan. And this is the weekly beer and video review show. Yeah, it's fun. It's awesome. I drink beer and talk videos with people around the world. All right, yeah. I'll be done in 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so, yeah, bring him in. Well, I don't, I don't know if they would want to be in there. Yeah, we should bring him in. <laughs> Sorry. From time to time, you will hear and see me walk away, but I will tell you, I will tell you I'm in the works of, uh, you know, it got pushed back a little bit. We are in the works of, of getting a brand new studio, like a professional studio, uh, it was going to be the end of April. Now it looks like the end of July. I'm making sure that everything's set up right, set up properly. So we're going to be doing it from the studio. And once I have that studio set up, yeah, we will be bringing people live on the show. And not only through StreamYard and through the split screen, but actually here sitting next to me. Um, hey, how you doing? And this and that. All that kind of fun stuff. So stay tuned for that. <clears throat> All right. What am I watching? I'm watching The Expanse. I uh, read about it and uh, I heard about it and I actually started it a long time ago. If you go back and watch maybe a year and a half ago, I had started it. I only got through two seasons. Yes, Nicholas, we're so happy that you're here. You are becoming an original. You are becoming a, a, a person that shows up each and every week and I can't thank you enough. But I'm reading The Expanse. It's five seasons and it's, it's just the kind of TV show I like where it's about like science uh, fiction and they've... I don't know too much about it because I've only watched two episodes, but they basically have left Earth and they have settled on these um, space hubs between all the different planets. So you have Mars that's inhabitable, you have uh, uh, Jupiter that's inhabitable, and then there's these space stations that kind of float around with society, and I'll let you know more about it. It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon until um, my New York comes out. It's on Amazon. Huh? And some of the five... Um, seasons of it you can also read the books but um i'm pretty sure that's a neat series but it's also one of those cool series that i actually can see myself on right i wish that i was auditioning i wish i was out there uh trying for this kind of stuff but you know maybe the next one or you know you gotta you know continue to watch stuff like this and see where you land because you never know Maybe they're in their third season and they call you in for the fourth season. And if you know the style of show, you can kind of um, read to that audience, if you will. But yeah, that's what I'm watching. That's what I'm reading. I hope you guys are staying up with something cool. If you have any suggestions, please let me know if, what I should read, what I should uh, watch. I'd love to hear from you. This is what we're drinking. It is the Golden Road Wolf Pup Hazy IPA. I love your accent. Oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, it's funny. Like when I when I'm home, hi everyone. And when I'm home in, in Buffalo, if I'm home for a long time, I start talking. You know, we're not like all of a sudden like talking like this. Like, hey, you know, they can sense through that yellow beer that made. <laughs> that you can see the yellow. Beer. No, we can't see. And when I'm at home. I started to get my accent back, but I don't know if it'll ever leave, mixed with the sound of my voice. <laughs> but thank you. All right, let's go ahead and try this sucker down. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this a big gulp, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a score. All right, not bad. I've yet to throw up. Not bad. I kind of take, I kind of taste uh, 
like a pineapple flavor. That's what I taste more than uh, more than the grapefruit. I taste more of a pineapple flavor. Um, there's not really a high hop concentration going on in there. And overall, it's a decent beer. Isn't that Brooklyn accent? <laughs> no, actually, we're more of a... A Buffalo accent is a little bit different. We're more like a weird cross between... <laughs> Can you do a Ron Swanson, huh? We're, we're kind of a... We're kind of a mixture of like that hardcore East Coast, like, hey, how you doing, huh? But then like a little bit of uh, Midwest, you know, we still uh, we still say things like pop and Saturday and, uh, you know, also too, it has to depend on what type of neighborhood that you grew up in. And I grew up in Kenmore around a lot of blue collar families, right? So I didn't grow up in a very... Um, I don't want to say sophisticated because there's a lot of sophisticated people in blue collar neighborhoods. They're just sophisticated about different things. It's more of a um, scholastic sophistication where their pronunciation and enunciation is very neutral. And even if they're from Buffalo, they kind of sound very commonly like anybody from the rest of the world. We talk like we just want to talk and I, and there's all kinds of weird slang from grandparents and things like that. So, um, that's where my accent gets its uh, origins origins from, mixed with a little slurring from the beer. I mean, the Hollywood Hellcats was a strong beer, so, you know. And then, um, well, this one, although it wasn't super strong, still had a great taste. I don't, you know, I don't know where I stand on the hazies. I'm not going to put my stamp on it and give you an exact of what I feel, whether I like them or not, because some of them I enjoy. Some of them are okay. I've never had a really bad one. This one was okay. I felt like it had a nice flavor to it. It was very citric. It was very pineapple-y. It, it had a weird aftertaste. Golden Road is still my favorite brewery. And, um, I'm sorry, Golden Road is my favorite brewery here in Los Angeles. And um, I'll, I'll always stay true to them, and I always go back. But um, this one, you know, I'm not, I'm not thrilled about it. I thought it was good. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a 3.0. Okay, not a great score and taste, but still, right on the par. I think it's a good beer. You'll enjoy it. Would you go back if you had other choices? Probably not. If that was the only choice, hell yeah, of course. But um, yeah, I, I just. I don't feel like you need to explore this one as much. But with that being said, don't let my opinion skew you. Say I love Golden Road. Yes. Golden Road is amazing, Lala. We need to get out and go, Lala. We just need to go. All right. So the price. Price is not bad. Okay. I bought this in a 12-pack for $12.99. So after taxes and stuff... You're looking at about $1.75 a can. So not bad. You get a good beer. Is it accessible in California and the West Coast? Yeah, you're a beer diplomat. <laughs> Frank, hats off to you, brother. I love it, dude. That is awesome, man. I, that is cool. I would love to be a beer diplomat. And because because I'm not schooled on, on the brewing process and like what goes into it and the ingredients and stuff... I talk to you just like I would talk to you if you were standing in front of me, okay? Now, as this show continues to grow, and as I continue to learn more about the, the, the back end of brew, you don't have to take my word for it. Yeah, thank you. You, you don't, uh, you know, as I continue to learn more about beer and continue to do this, I find more about the back end. For me, a beer was always like, yeah, it's a friggin' beer. Drink it, get drunk, let's go. You know, but now I'm finding out more about the process of it. it just tastes like crap. <laughs> just say it tastes like crap. It doesn't. It doesn't taste like crap. 26C does. But um, but the price is not bad. $1.75. The haircut looks great. Thank you, Calvin. Yes. I'm looking very, very short. All right. But um the price at $1.75, it's what you expected. It is a, a nicer beer. You're not getting that, that draft kind of Paps or Ham's beer. So I'm going to give it a 3.5. I think it's a good price for what you're getting as a beer. All right. Now the design. Okay. The design is great. I like this. I love dogs. I love huskies. I love the light blue. And I love Golden Road. Okay. Really cool. I love this. That If you look at it, 
Um, there's kind of a fun pun on this if you look at it. Uh, did, did someone say Miller Genuine? No. I like, I love the champagne of beers. Okay, Miller High Life. So if you look at it, look at it close, okay? It's cool because it's a husky, right? But it's Golden Road. And check out the reflection in uh, his sunglasses, his palm trees, because it's here in Southern California. It's here in LA. So I think that's really cool. I think the design is great. And I like that a lot. So I'm going to give it a 3.5. You know, the thing that didn't overwhelm me, it didn't have anything to really just mm, get me over the top on it. Really, you know, you got a bunch of hot girls with maces and baseball bats and eye patches and mini skirts. That's friggin' cool, right? This is cool, but it's like there's levels to this coolness, as they say, right? So my opinion, that's pretty cool, but not, you know, worthy of anything over a 3.5 on my scale now accessibility you can get this beer anywhere in la now i'm seeing it at any mom and pop any bodega any kind of quick and easy fast restaurant um you can find it in a lot of places on tap at pubs um so that's pretty cool outside of la i don't know on the east coast i'm not sure all across the world i'm not really sure which kind of hurts it and it's kind of it's sad because really golden road is phenomenal i really like it there it's a fun atmosphere it's a fun vibe when you go there right it's um it's like a beer hall atmosphere if i remember they have really good pretzel sticks but um but yeah it's uh it's a good place and i definitely enjoy going there but unfortunately, this beer is not worldwide known. I hope that it is because it's massive. And I think that they can produce a lot of beer to get out there. But I'm going to go ahead and have to score it a 2.5, the same as Paperback, which is unfortunate because it's going to bring down the overall score. Now the TMD X Factor. This is the big one, all right? This is the one that could bring it back, and it's certainly going to bring it back to respectability. Now the flavor wasn't great, Okay wasn't the best I've had from Golden Road. And I like a lot of their beers. Um, the price was good, okay? The accessibility wasn't so good. The design was cool. It wasn't awesome. When we have to go and play cards against me, <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. Let's get a crew and go and play. Now let's set it up, and I would definitely love that. <laughs> so the thing is, is I'm very loyal to the people and things that are close to me in my life. That is one thing that if you know my close friends, they will tell you right away that I'm, I'm loyal like a fucking dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, excuse my language. If you're watching this and you're a child, I didn't mean to say that. But um, I don't leave. I stay till the end. Um, I'm dedicated. And the things that I like, I put everything into that I like. And I really, really like Golden Road Brewery. I like the product. I think they do a great job. I love the fact that it's here in Los Angeles. I love the fact that they have multiple different beers. Each time I've gone there, I've had a good time. You're looking handsome today. Looks like you're eight. Ah, thank you, Baro. 18? Wow. That's, I appreciate that, man. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. But but, but really, I, I mean that. And and. Because of that, I'm always going to support Golden Road. Even if they put out a bad beer, I'm always going to give it a benefit of the doubt and a little bit better than it should be. So, for the TMD X Factor, the fact that they had this beer, it was easy. It's, it's easy for me to get. The fact that I love this place, the fact that I will go there and drink and play Cards of Humanity with my friends, I definitely got to give it a good score. And that's why I'm going to give it the TMD Factor of a 4.0 holy cow hey gunny <laughs> no i wish i cannot take that title but i know what you mean i can't take that title i never served there but um but that's funny <laughs> and uh that is that that's a good stuff but um guys i just realized we have 17 likes that's a lot that's a lot for this show because throughout the show you guys don't see it but analytically i can see who do we got? Hey, Gunther Lane. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Guys, we have a new person. Gunther. Gunther, where are you from? Tell us where you are from. 18 likes now. Gunther, please tell us where you're watching from. 
That is awesome. I love when we have organic people that pop in. Please give Gunta a warm welcome. Say hello. Welcome to the show. We are going to now tally up the score of the Wolf Session IPA, and I am really excited. But what I was saying is, you know, she is my wife. Nice. Very cool. That is so cool you asked your wife to join. Thank you so much, Nicholas. All right, so, okay, we got to 7, 10, okay. Unfortunately, we... Latvia, yes, all right, yes, that's so cool. You guys are from Latvia. Wow, this is so awesome. You guys, I gotta say, I love Latvia. I love this country. It's um, it's one of my favorite countries in the world. I love to go and visit there. I have a lot of friends there. Um, I go there, and if you've never seen my videos, I do a summer camp there every year. Uh, it's called uh, the WESP Camp. Um, if you haven't checked out some of my videos, check it out. I go to these crazy, strange places with my friend Giannis and Leva and um, Ramus. And, uh, you know, Latvia to me was one of the most interesting places because it's a small country that a lot of people don't know about. But the people are wonderful. Um, they're very fun. Uh, it has so much good times out there, and I cannot wait. It doesn't look like it's going to happen this year, so probably the following year I will be going back to Latvia. I try to go back every other year and do the camp. And um, Well, welcome to the show, Ginta. And I know I found your channel when we were looking at Latvian food videos. And Oh, that's awesome. That is so cool. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, Guys, bear with me because my heart is like really... Yeah, thank you. And it was one of those things where, like, obviously I'm not able to travel last, this past year, but had I been, maybe I would be a little bit more in subscribers. But the fact that Gunta and Nicholas, and, and you said you were lonely and you were looking for food videos and you found me, <laughs> out of all the people in the world, reviewing cool, fun videos. Like, um, I went to Salva in, in, in downtown Riga. And uh, I ate the potato pancakes in Riga. And then my favorite thing, my favorite thing, guys, if you've never tried it before, it's freaking awesome. I've only seen it in Latvia. It's the double hot dog. The double hot dog, I, oh man, it's, it's like a panini bread and they do French hot dogs where they stick it down in this way. Uh, thank you. Yeah, please give Ginta and Nicholas a warm welcome from Latvia. Padias, Padias, Padias. Um, I think that's... Uh, uh, Labi Labi, Labi Labi. I know a little Latvian language, but Padias, um, says, I believe, thank you. So welcome to the show. I'm glad you found it. Um, but here we are. Unfortunately, great brewery. Love this place. Um, Golden Brun, Golden Road Brewery only scored a 16.5. Ooh, okay, just below par, but that's okay. We're going to be trying another one of their beers very soon. We'll be trying some more beers as we continue to grow on this channel. I will continue to show up each and every week. I did live uh, videos in what's better than a hot dog? A double hot dog. Dude, Latvia is amazing. Um, I did a couple of Latvian beer videos. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the show. This is what we had. We had this one. I'm going to go ahead and leave you with the quote of the week. We had this one, the Hollywood Hellcats Paperback Brewing Company, and we had Golden Road Brewing Hazy Pup IPA. Love this one. This one was so-so. I'm not sure if it was the haziness or the pineapple flavor. It just didn't ring um, a bell. I've been there two times at the Marine Corps base in Palatine. Your hair looks like their style. <laughs> yep. Well, that is the character that I'm playing right now. I am playing a Marine, an ex-Marine, who is now... Um, he is now uh, a forest ranger. So that's why I have this short haircut. I was never in the military. Have you ever heard about Complentos y Chilean No, I haven't. Sounds delicious. Please let me know. I love hot dogs. All right, guys. <clears throat> we have gone further and longer than most shows. Thank you so much. Showing up to me, showing up here to me means the world. Thank you so much for being here, for hitting that like button watching any videos, commenting, all that kind of stuff, I'll definitely reach back to your comments. If you want to let me know down in the description, thank you so much. Thank you, freak. And I'm, I'm getting comments and 
this is the part that I, I, I always like doing the quote of the week, but I always miss it because I know I'm not going to be able to do this again for the, the whole week. But we will be back for just one beer. Completos are chopped tomatoes, avocados, mayo, and ketchup on it. Oh, that sounds delicious. Okay, the show must go on. Look for the show this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Here we go. I'm going to leave you with the quote of the week. And this is a Bavarian proverb, okay? 20 likes. Nice. All right. Woohoo! hoo Whoop, whoop, whoop. Round of applause. Thank you. Ah. Okay, here we go. This is, this is it, okay? A fine beer may be judged with only one sip. But it's better to thoroughly be sure. All right, <laughs> that's a Bavarian proverb, and that is the one I'm going to leave you with of the quote of the week. And that's why <clears throat> sometimes people ask me, like, what do you think? What do you think of the beer? How, what's your score after one sip? And I say, no, 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 no. You got to fully drink the whole one. Ginta, thank you. You got to drink the whole beer, okay? You have to drink the full beer. And that is a Bavarian proverb. That is a proverb, as we talked earlier about the Frankfurt. Have a lovely Sunday. Thank you so much, Ginta. Thank you, Judatik. You must drink the whole beer. Don't drink a sip and say, no, I don't like that. Ugh. You know what I mean? Drink the entire beer. Um, yeah, the Bavarians know what they're talking about. Even if somebody offers you a beer at a party... You're not sure about it, pour it in a glass or drink from the bottle, but don't just drink the sip, finish the whole thing, and then discuss and talk about how you feel about it. Guys, very nice videos. Danny, thank you so much. Nicholas, I can't say thank you enough. I'm continuing to grow. I'll continue to show up. I'll do the hard work to show up when nobody's watching. We have an awesome time. I really find a bad beer, even if it's a bad beer. I'm, 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 I think, Greg, I think we're... I think me and you are in full agreement. Um, have a great week, everyone. Whatever you're doing, whatever you uh, got going on, wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for joining in. Check it out if you can on the, the St. Patrick's Day. Goodbye, everyone. Peace, love, happiness, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for allowing me to entertain you, to coming on the show. I had a great time. Next week's show is going to be a lot of fun to eat or not to eat with Nate. BC will be doing this day in history. And like I said, if you recognize anybody that wants to come on the show and be part of show and tell, please let me know. I'm Travel Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Thank you, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>